Let's look at a very simple example. We need to solve this equation for x, that sine x equals to 1 half. Now, based on your current knowledge of trigonometry, you can probably easily tell that sine 6 pi equals to 1 half. Therefore, x equals to 6 pi. That is correct. However, is that the only solution to this equation? In fact, if you look at the graph of the sine function and run a line here at y equals to 1 half, you can see that this line will intercept with the graph at multiple locations, indicating multiple solutions to this equation. In fact, you probably can tell that there should be infinite number of solutions to this equation. How do we include all the possible solutions but not more in a simple expression? What we're looking for is the general solution to this equation, and we're going to achieve that by following a simple two-step strategy. The first step is to find all the special solutions in only one period. Now, since sine function has the period of 2 pi, you can look for your special solutions in any period of 2 pi. But for convenience, let's work on this period from 0, including 0, to 2 pi, not including 2 pi. Otherwise, you might introduce repeated solution. Now, as you can see, in this period, there are only two solutions that satisfy this equation, x equals to 6 pi or x equals to 5 over 6 pi. And these are our special solutions. Now we have our special solutions. Remember, all six trigonometric functions are periodic functions, and the function values repeat themselves period after period. Therefore, by applying the periodic function property, the next step is to add multiples of the period to these special solutions in order to get general solutions. Therefore, since sine function has a period of 2 pi, we add 2 n pi to these special solutions. n can be any integer, 0, negative, or positive. And now we have found the general solutions to this equation. Let's look at this example. We need to solve this equation that cosine x multiplied by tangent x equals to cosine x. When you look at this equation, if you want to cancel out cosine x from both sides of this equation and get this simplified version that tangent x equals to 1, that will be incorrect because by doing this, you are missing out on the solution that cosine x equals to 0 will also make this equation valid. The correct way to start is to move cosine x from the right-hand side to the left-hand side and try to factorize. We can pull out the common factor cosine x and left with tangent x minus 1, and that equals to 0. And from here, we can write two simpler equations, cosine x equals to 0, tangent x minus 1 equals to 0, rearranged cosine x equals to 0, tangent x equals to 1. Now, this system of two simpler equations is equivalent to our original equation. And we're going to solve these two equations individually, and eventually we're going to combine the solutions. Let's start with the first equation. Remember, the first step in the two-step strategy is to find all the special solutions within one period. You can do this whichever way you want, but I normally prefer to sketch a graph to help with the solving process. Once again, cosine x has the period of 2 pi, so for convenience, I'm going to choose this period to find my special solutions, and I can clearly see that when x equals to half a pi and 3 half a pi, this is when cosine x equals to 0, and these two are my special solutions. Now, for the second step, in order to get the general solutions, I'm going to add the multiples of the period to my special solutions. And since cosine function has a period of 2 pi, I'm going to add 2 n pi to my special solutions. Once again, n is any integer, positive, negative, or 0. But we're not done yet because there's another equation we need to solve. Now, for the second equation, tangent x equals to 1, 
once again i'm going to first find the special solutions within one period of the tangent function tangent function has the period of one pi so i'm going to focus on this period from zero to pi to find my special solutions you can choose any period as you want now within this period as i chose i can see that there's only one special solution which is when x equals to quarter pi now to get from special solution to general solution, I need to add multiples of the period to my special solution. Don't forget, tangent function has a period of only one pi. Therefore, I'm going to add n times pi to my special solution. And this general solution combined with the general solutions that I solved for the previous equation is now my general solution for this original equation. Sometimes we will see equations that have the quadratic or polynomial form that we are familiar with, like this one. For this type of problem, we will do the same thing. We will factorize it first and then solve for sine x to be, in this case, 1 half and a negative 1. However, our job is not done yet because we are trying to solve for x, so we cannot stop at sine x. Once again, with the help of the graph, I choose this to be the period, and I want to look for all the special solutions within this period that satisfy either one of these two equations, that sine x equals to 1 half or sine x equals to negative 1. Now, in this period, I can tell that there are three special solutions x equals to 6 pi and x equals to 5 6 pi satisfy that sine x equals to 1 half and x equals to 3 half a pi satisfies that sine x equals to negative 1. Therefore, three special solutions add the multiples of the period 2m pi to each one of them, and now I have found all the general solutions to this original equation. Sometimes, before you can solve the equation, you must apply some of the trigonometric fundamental identities that we learned earlier. Like in this example, although the equation does seem to have a quadratic form, you cannot factorize it because you have sine x and cosine x mixed together. So, the first step is to recognize that, according to the Pythagorean theorem, sine x squared plus cosine x squared equals to 1. Therefore, sine x squared can be rewritten as 1 minus cosine x squared. Rearrange. Now, this is the familiar quadratic form, and we can factorize this and solve for cosine x to be negative 1 half. But once again, we're not done yet because we are solving for x. So I want to solve for x that cosine x equals to negative 1 half, Again, I'm using the graph of the cosine function, focusing on this period of 2 pi. I want to find the special solutions, and I can tell that within this period, x equals to 2 third pi and x equals to 4 third pi satisfy that cosine x equals to negative 1 half. Therefore, these two are my special solutions, and I add 2 n pi to each one of them, and now I have found the general solutions and now I have completed solving this problem. Sometimes we will see this type of problems involving multiples of the angle, like in this case 3x, and we still need to solve for x. For this type of problem, my suggestion is do not deal with this coefficient until the very last step. So we will solve for 3x together first. So following standard procedure, we take the square root on both sides. Therefore, tangent 3x equals to either positive or negative square root of 3. On this graph of the tangent function, I focus on the first period from 0 to pi, and I need to find special solutions for 3x within this period with tangent value of either positive square root of 3 or negative square root of 3. And I can find two special solutions, either 3x equals to third pi or 3x equals to 2 third pi. Again, I want to make general solutions next by adding m pi to each of these two special solutions. 
And now I'm ready to divide the entire solution by three to get rid of the coefficient of three. Therefore, the solution for x is 9th pi plus m pi over 3, or 2 over 9 pi plus m pi over 3. And that's the solution I'm looking for for the original function.